everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soyin Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Today I'm going to be doing a remake of my Japanese cherry blossom soap. This was a soap that I did way back when I first started my channel and it was one of the very first soaps I ever attempted to pipe flowers onto. Those flowers were huge and chunky and I actually piped them directly onto the soap. This time, if you saw the behind the scenes video, I actually piped those little cherry blossoms separately as I like to do, and then I'm going to put them onto the soap once I have finished making it. So let's go and make Japanese cherry blossom. So let's get this one started. I have, as usual, in my bucket all of my oils, and that recipe is down below in the description box. I have my lye water solution, which is distilled water, sodium hydroxide, and I also add in a little bit of tassa silk. And I'm just pouring it in down my stick blender just to stop any splashbacks. And I'm going to give this one a very quick light mix to bring it to emulsion, and then we're going to split it up for a few colours. So the first colour I am pouring off I have in this little jug here, I have some Silver Lake Mica with just a little bit of latte and I only need a very small amount of soap in there because we are going to be doing some piping on the top of this soap and that will be for the branches of the ch um, cherry tree or the blossom tree. In this one here I have some, what did we use, some jade mica and although the blossoms don't generally have leaves on when they come into flower I just felt that we needed to have a little bit of green just to break up all of that pink on there and sometimes you do get those little hints of other colour come through as well. And then into my big pot I am using blush mica and I'm going to pour off a fair amount of this one like so and then into my bigger jug here we might just pour off a bit more into my bigger jug here I have got some water dispersible titanium dioxide so we're going to color the base of this one white this one has zero vanillin so we should get a really nice white soap with this um, by putting that titanium dioxide in I'm going to get these colors mixed in and then we're going to add in the fragrance before we start pouring The next thing I'm going to do is actually pour off about half of that pink into here and into that white bucket I also decided to add in some of the blizzard mica which gives it a really nice pretty glittery effect. What I'm going to do in this one that I've just poured off is lighten it up. So I've put in some titanium dioxide. I'm going to give that another quick glitz and then we will get to pouring. Okay, so we have got our mould here and first thing I'm going to start by doing, I'm going to start with my accent colours and I'm just going to pour a little bit of that onto the bottom of the mould and then a bit of the light pink and then we'll come in with that white and I'm just going to keep pouring my soap in like so. So we'll pour a fair bit more of the white and then I'm going to come back in with my dark pink. I don't think it really matters if I go light or dark first. I just thought we'd try a slightly different way of pouring this in. So this isn't the first time I have done Japanese cherry blossom. In fact I did this one way back when towards the start of my channel and it was actually the first soap I ever tried doing piping on and I have learnt so much since I did that first soap. First time I did the Japanese cherry blossom and did my first bit of piping I piped straight onto the top of my soap and they were really 
big clunky looking flowers but they were still turned out really well for my first sort of attempt at piping because I have never done piping of cakes or anything like that. Um, I don't think I've even piped frosting on cupcakes. I've always spooned my frosting onto cupcakes. So I was really, really, really happy with it. But I've always wanted to remake the, um, the Japanese cherry blossom and actually do some more delicate looking um, cherry blossoms on the top. <laughs> so that is what I have decided to do today. And the other thing is when I um, get closer to Christmas, which we are doing so now, I like to make a few soaps that can match in with some of my other fragrances and then what I do is I make little gift packs up with them. Okay, so that is now into the mold there. I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes just to set up nice and firmly on the top. And while it does that, I'm going to go and put these um, few into some piping bags. Okay, so I've allowed this to set up just a little bit here. And the first thing I've got is that grey brownie colour. It probably is still a little bit too runny to pipe, but I don't want to miss my opportunity to get my flowers to stick. In my biodegradable um, piping bag, I have a Wilton number two riding tip, no, number three white riding tip. And what I'm going to first of all do is just put some sort of squiggly lines randomly across the top of the soap just to make it look like there are some cherry blossom branches. I'm really pleased with how that is looking at the moment and what we have here on my tray are the flowers that we piped in the behind the scenes video this week so these are my little cherry blossoms off camera I also piped in some little half ones just to make them look like a couple of little um, uh, buds coming off the plant just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look so what I'm going to start to do is pop these onto my soap just randomly here redoing my Japanese cherry blossom not only was it because I wanted to have a go at remaking this soap with a much more delicate flower now that I've learned a lot more about piping it is coming up to Christmas and well it's time for soapers to start thinking about their Christmas soaps anyway and although this isn't actually a Christmas themed soap Every Christmas I do up little gift packs where you can get a moisturiser and matching soap. And the first time I did this Japanese cherry blossom, I actually used some of those soaps to make those gift packs up with. And they sold so well and so many people really, really liked the um, Japanese cherry blossom fragrance in their moisturiser. In fact, I've had quite a few people asking me if I can add it into the range, which I would may have a look at doing that one for next year when we redo all of our fragrances um, but I thought for this Christmas I will actually do up some more of those gift packs so I needed to get this soap made up so that it is ready to put into the gift packs so I think I have pretty much filled that as much as I can with the flowers I am going to grab my green one here which I have got a I think it was a Wilton 67 leaf tip in here and I am just going to add some little leaves just all over it just to really pick up and give it a little bit more color but they really are going to be very tiny leaves because as I mentioned before you don't usually see the leaves on the cherry blossoms it is usually just the flowers um, the leaves come out and then the actual flowers do afterwards but 
I really need to break up some of the colours on this one and really make it pop. So let's get these leaves on here. pleased with how that one is now looking now that I've finished with my green um this doesn't go to waste what I now do with this one is I'm just going to pipe it into this little silicon mold here and I will leave this one to set up overnight and then it will go into my soap dough bag so if ever you are having to go up piping and you've got you've just over calculated how much you've got because sometimes when you just need that little amount of piping it's so hard to save just the right amount of color for it you always end up with wastage just pop it into a little mold and then you can save it for some soap dough for a later project let's give that a knock down and that will go over onto my tray so we can go and put that in my curing spot Okay, so to really finish these flowers off, um, I kept back some of that darker pink and I mixed through just a little bit of gold mica and I've got it into a piping bag with a little writer's tip in there and all I'm going to do is put some little dots into the middle of this soap. They might not be very obvious on the camera but it, in real life they do just put that finishing touch to it. And just gives it a little bit more depth so we'll get all these little ones piped on here to finish this off of course we need some sparkle and I have in my little pump bottle here some holographic biodegradable glitter which I got in from um, Aussie soap supplies and it's just got this really beautiful sheen to it which will really pick that up let's get some more out and then to really bring up some more of that shine, I am also going to put some of that blizzard mica across as well, just to give it that real pearlescent look. And that is it. We are done. So here is Japanese cherry blossom up close. I'm going to leave this one sit here overnight and come back tomorrow and cut it open. And we'll see what sort of swirls we've got in the inside by doing the pour the way I did. I am now ready to cut open into Japanese cherry blossom and I am so pleased with how this one has come up. Look at all that sparkling biodegradable glitter on there and the mica too. The flowers on here are just so much more delicate than the original one that I did in this Japanese cherry blossom. So that really shows me just how far I've come with doing my piping and so pleased that I keep practicing at it. Um, it is also smelling really good just as the original soap did that I made using this fragrance so I know it is a well behaving one. I am going to go gently gently through this top to try and do the least amount of damage to those flowers. I did contemplate cutting it on its side but I thought I actually might end up pushing more of the flowers off if I did that and I am through all the flowers going through there and uh, almost through and then we'll take a look at what we've got on the inside of this soap. All right, so let's grab this end piece here. And wow, I am loving, loving that swirl in there. That's the first time I've kind of really done a layered drop swirl throughout my soap. And I love the effect of that. It's really, really odd. There's like these tiny little glycerin lines all through some of these little patches, but it really adds to the whole appearance of it. And this was without putting any hangers or anything through. So I really love what the soap has actually done to make its own little patterns. And there is another bar. And again, this lighter one, that's where I put the titanium dioxide into it. So I possibly actually didn't mix it enough to try and incorporate all of that titanium in there to really get rid of those mica lines. But I think it really adds to the actual whole appearance. Look at this tiny, tiny little swirl down there. That is just so delicate and so cute. I am really, really loving. And look, there's a tiny heart in there as well. I love finding things that you can see in soaps, the different sort of images and things like that. I'm one of these people that will sit and actually watch the clouds and can see pictures in the clouds and it annoys my husband because he can't see any of them. Um, occasionally he sees the odd one, but it, he can't get as creative at seeing things like that as I do. But I always see little images in the swirls in soap. 
there is the top so you get the little branches the little bits of the cherry blossom and this one's got one of like the sort of opening buds of a cherry blossom on there so that's really quite cute and the leaves are just tiny and delicate as well because the actual part of that plant that stands out are the flowers so I am really really pleased with how this one came out and I'll definitely do some more pours like that just layering those drop swirls one after the other because that gives a really really pretty pattern. So I hope you have enjoyed how I have made my Japanese cherry blossom. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next time, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you then. Bye.